What up everybody? My name is Zach, welcome back to Case Digital, and in this video we're actually answering the question of how to convert a string to an int in Python. So without further ado, let's hop right in, start coding. What up everybody? So like I mentioned in this video, we're answering that question of how you can convert a string to an int in Python. And today, essentially, I just wanted to go over a couple things. It's actually really simple and there's, I tried to find it like a naive way that maybe would be more of a naive way to do this. But actually in all reality, this is a very simple method that I want to go over that you can use and do. But there are a few gotchas that I also want to cover. So let's hop right in and let's start talking about how you can convert that string to an int in Python. All right, so how to convert a string to an int? Well, like I mentioned, like or like I said, like I couldn't find a naive solution that maybe some beginners might do or that I myself, when I was starting out, uh, you know, tried to, how I, in the beginning, tried to convert a string to an int. Essentially, Python kind of made it easy where all you have to do is use the int constructor, which is essentially taking your number and going, so going int parentheses, your string, which is in, or your number, which is in string representation. So in our case, it's the variable my num and just wrapping it in this int constructor. If you do this, it'll convert this number into a string and we can show, I can show you that by printing it out. Um, and if I print this out, you'll see that we get a thousand. I showed the type on the last one, so it shows it's a string. And then when I print it out, like when you're printing something, like obviously it's gonna print out to the console, so it's gonna kind of look like in string representation, so it's not gonna look any different than what my other one did. But if I were to show you the type of, when I wrap it and I show you the type of this, um, and I can actually, just to show you this, we'll, we'll do this. We'll rename this label or re-declare um, this as this. So now I can just print out my num and then I can show that. And so that should show you that when I print out this type, it's printing out the int of my num, which as we know, or as we should know, is an int, it's an int value. So that's how you convert a string to an int in Python. Now, there are a few gotchas that I wanna talk about because if you don't, and they've gotten me, even recently, I, I ran into one of these errors or one of these gotchas that kind of screwed me up. So let's actually start talking about a few of the gotchas that you kind of gotta watch out when converting a string to an int. Hey, I just wanna jump in real quick, say thank you so much for watching the video so far. If it's providing you value, please click that like button below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so we can learn more about software development and programming. And and well, speaking of programming, let's get right back to it. So some of the gotchas that I ran into and that you will probably run into or if you haven't or, or that you may run into if you haven't already are when you get a string or a number that's in string format, a lot of times, especially if it's a long number, like um, like a thousand, a lot of times they'll have something like a comma in it. Now, let's run this exact same thing, but with the comma and see what happens. If I have a comma in my, in my string representation of my number and I run this, I get an error. And the reason is, is because like when you, the int, this int, constructor is really only looking for a straight number with like no uh, extra characters like decimal points and or um, commas or dollar signs if you're dealing with money or anything like that. So even if I switch this out and say, well, it's not a thousand, it's like, say it's $10. Well, what happens if I run that? Like I just mentioned, um, even with a dollar, like a decimal point, it doesn't even convert it to like a float first and then it converts it to an end. It just says, hey, I can't handle this error. So to actually do something like this, which you'd have to do or how to handle something like this, you'd have to do like, like in one of my previous videos where I talk about strings um, and how to remove characters, essentially you'll just have to do dot and then remove, or you can do dot replace. And you can say, hey, I wanna replace all you know, decimal points and then just replace it with nothing. Now, if I do this and print this out, so we'll, actually, let's do this. Let's show you what it looks like first. So we're printing that out so you know, and actually, and I can do that through here. And then we'll do the same thing, or we'll move this part, and then move this part. So we can print it out just so you can see. So we'll first show that it should be, you know, 10, you know, $10 quote unquote, and then it's still a string, and then we'll show that, hey, that we've removed the decimal place. Um, but if we remove the decimal place, what, ha what happens? That'll turn it into something that um, we necessarily don't want. So like first, you know, it's $10, then we remove the decimal place, now it's a thousand. So um, in that case, you might do something like, if it's $10, that can cause, you know, and you remove the decimal places, that could cause an issue. If my num is just a thousand, and we'll just say, or we'll do this, so we only have to replace one thing. That's why you use variables. Um, so you can only replace one thing and it works. So like, again, we'll just show you this again. Um, it's a thousand or 10 with a comma. And I'll make this a thousand. So it's a thousand, we will run this again. It should get another error. We, we run it again, 
in this case, we were trying to replace decimal places, but we had a comma, so it didn't quite work. Um, and then we ran into that error. Now, if we change this to a comma and replace that with nothing, and we run this again, we should get the number 1,000. It should work correctly, and you can see that it does. Now, let's go back to the case where this is, say, the 10 with a decimal point. In this case, what I would do in a situation like this is if I only want the int version of this number, I would do something rather than do a replace, I would do something where it's a split. And what a split will do is if I'd say split, I give it a token, so something I want it to split on. So in this case, we want to do this. Now this will create a list and where it'll essentially take, it'll take that token, which is our comma, and it'll take one part of the list. So create, like in, our, in this case here, um, it'll create two items in a list or a list that contains two items. Um, if I put another comma or another decimal point here and did that, it would create a list containing three items. That's what kind of split will do. It takes everything and then everything before and just keeps adding uh, everything to a list. Um, but essentially, in this case, I would do something like, hey, look, I only want the int version of this. And so the int version of a number with uh, decimal places, um, you can do a split and then take the first index of the list and that should give us 10. So if we run this again, we should get, hey, $10, $10 down to 10, which now there's a string version of it. Now here's int. Another way you can do this is convert this string to a float because float can actually handle this because a float is supposed to have decimal place, places and then convert that float to an int. So one thing you could do here, like I mentioned, would, do, would be to do a float and then, and then that'll show you that this is a float and then we'll convert that float to an int. So if we do this, you'll see, hey, string. Oh, we converted to a float, it handled the decimal place. And then we converted that float into an int and that gave it just 10. So those are things to watch out for. Like when you're converting a string to an int, you can't have any extra characters. Um, you can't have any extra characters like commas, like any basically any character that's not a number, you can't have it in there when you're converting a string to an int or else you run into these types of errors. And so that makes you, you know, when you're dealing with the data, you should probably know the data type that you're dealing with. And if you're dealing with floats and you need the int version of a float, well, first do like we did here, convert the float, convert the string to a float and then the float to an int. So that's one path that you can go. If you're dealing with just a number, like say a thousand, then just you can just convert that number um, to a thousand. You may have to do some some massaging of your number in a sense where it's like if it's a thousand with a comma, you do you do the method that we said before uh, where you do the replace. Because even if I try to re convert this to a float and then do an it, I'm going to get an error because it's dealing with that, that, um, that comma there. So you essentially have to do not replace. And if I did it this way, with, oops, comma, replace with nothing. Or an empty string essentially is what that's saying. And I do this, you should see that we go again from a string to a float and then back to an int. So that's how you essentially convert a string to a float. There's two paths you can go, like convert it to another you know, number type, like a float, to then go to an int, uh, depending on what your data looks like. Or you could essentially just convert your, or just replace all the um, characters and, and remove them to essentially give you your basic number as just a number with no special characters or no other additional characters other than digits and then cast that using the int constructor. So go try that, test it out with your code. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below um, and I'll either respond to it or create another video on to help further explain this method. So without further ado, keep practice this and keep on coding. Hey, thank you so much for programming with me today. I really appreciate it. I hope you found value in that video. If you did, please hit that like button below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Let's continue to learn with one another. Until next time, keep on coding.